Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Thanks for watching another weekly video. Last week's video, we were working on some sewer crawler bodies, which is basically some square tubing. See the body of that thing is square tubing with some big thick side plates welded to it. And so we talked about doing some short circuit MIG welding for the one inch side plates and also did a little spray arc, spray transfer MIG. And uh, we, we kind of Walk through that, but this week we're talking, talking about TIG welding some bar stock to the top. Once the plates are all welded on, the next thing to do is weld these quarter inch pieces of bar stock to the top with some of the hardware bolts on. And so TIG welding just kind of does a little nicer job. I've MIGged them and TIGged them both and they both work out just fine, but today I'm TIG welding. Now you can see the surface of the, uh, the surface of the, uh, steel there is freshly bead blasted but you can see some specks of rust and that's going to give me a little throw me a little curve and I'll talk about it later but right now I'm cutting these little spacers it's a customer requirement it's like a verbal requirement said hey can you make this thing just a little sloppier underneath there I'm having a hard time getting my hardware up underneath there a little sliding clamp or something like that so easiest way to do it is just cut some uh, cut some small short pieces of MIG wire and use them as a spacer so He's perfectly happy with that. It works out fine for him, and it's very easy for me to do. So, rather than cut shim stock and and all that, that would kind of like be overworking the, you know, the deal because I really need just some MIG wire to space it with. Another requirement is just to make sure that uh, the it's a loose one inch gap to travel down there. He doesn't want it tight. Gives him problems in the field. So. I just use the blade of that combination square to get make sure that it slides up and down there very easily. And then I'm going to get some tacks on this thing. I'm just going to get one tack on each piece. First, I'm going to make sure I got to, you know, make sure I maintain my di dimension there before I get another tack and lock it in. I'll do the same thing on the other end with the spacer wires. And then I'm going to get some quick tacks here using the torch trigger switch. Just fusion tacks to start with, just to get them locked down. A little double check, then come back and, and uh, put a little bit heavier tacks on them all the way around. Now, I'm using this big old cup here. That's just what I had left from the last job I did. Gas lens is not always needed. In this case, it's definitely not needed. So I'm going to swap to a small standard style collet body with a small number four cup. That's going to let me turn my flow meter down to about 10 CFH and save some gas and still get a good job. So a standard collet body has portholes coming out the side. A gas lens has several layers of wire screen mesh that the, wire, the gas comes out the front and diffuses and generally does a better job. Generally, lets you extend your electrode out further and for stainless steel, really helps a lot in uh, uh, giving a bigger blanket of gas and also letting you extend your electrode. But don't need it today so I'm using this small standard cup and a torch switch which brings me to some settings when you're using a torch switch and some amperage settings and whatnot you notice that was set at 156 amps there's a rule of thumb that says one amp per thousands but that kind of goes out the window at about 125 thousands so today I'm using a, the torch switch no foot pedal at the shop today left it at the other shop so I'm gonna set a use a 2t setting which means which means I got to, if I press the trigger, I get a, uh, I get an arc. If I let off, it goes away. It's a little bit more complicated than that because I have upslope, downslope, etc. So let's talk about that for just a minute. Upslope is adjustable, and I'll usually uh, on something this thick, I'll set it to zero. I want to, I want all my amps at once. I don't need to upslope to gradually increase the amps. But downslope is another story. I want a, at least a couple seconds of downslope to prevent a crater eye. If it shuts off all at once, sometimes it'll leave a crater dot, and uh, that's not good. So I set it about two to three seconds on the downslope, and that works out good for something this thick. Now, the other settings are start amps and end amps. Start amps, if you're welding razor blades and using a small electrode, you want low start amps. But if you're welding something big, let's say a 1 8 electrode, you need more start amps, or you're going to have trouble getting a, getting a good crisp start. So... Set the start amps up and the end amps I usually set all the way down to the minimum. I like it to taper off all the way. This machine will taper down to 5 amps before it cuts out, which is usually pretty good for almost anything. A little double check here. 
make sure I got my spaces and whatnot, and then I get more tax on it. And I'm, I've got the uh, film sped up here so so you don't get weary of watching me make tack welds. Once that's all done, I'm going to tilt it up, mainly for the purposes of being able to get a good camera shot. It'd be easy to weld just laying down flat. And I'm using my third hand here with my little ball of aluminum bronze on it just to make sure I pick up a good ground. I don't arc through any of the little stainless parts that are on it from the table. Now, when I was tack welding, because of the speckles of rust and because of the oxidation on the MIG welds done previously, I noticed porosity. So I'm going to use some 309 stainless to TIG weld these out. And there's a whole lot of discussion about just using 309 on carbon steel, but um, you don't want to do it if it's a coated weld and calls for E70 wire, but this is not, and uh, it's a turd chaser. So, you know, it's going to be fine just using straight 309. And there's that downslope, two seconds worth of downslope tapering it off. Are you going to watch me screw up here in a minute? Not all, not all, not, <laughs> not only am I shaking pretty good, but here at the end of the weld, I let it get out of hand and wham, there, it wicked over and chopped off the corner. That looks like crap. So you don't want to do that if at all possible. You either want to, you know, come shy of the edge or come all the way out to the edge and put enough filler in to keep a straight line there, but letting it wick out there like that. You know, a lot of people ask, why would you ever pulse on something this thick? Well, about 30 pulses a second and uh, 30 background, 30 uh, on time would have probably prevented that. It would make it stick and not wander like that. So it almost got out there on here too. I just should have got off the heat quicker. I don't have a foot pedal, but I um, thought it was worth talking about. All right, here we go again. Another technique here, this has uh, got a little bit of a groove and a gap, so I'm just laying the 332nd wire in there, not even dipping in and out, providing a little bit of pressure on the rod to keep it in the puddle, keep it from balling up, and uh, just walking over the rod with a little weave like this. I'll show it to you again. You do have to have your heat set pretty close. If you got it way too hot, you can't hardly, it, it will just ball the rod up, and you have to keep a good tight arc. But just like I said, pushing that rod, just give it a little pressure into the puddle will keep it from balling up and it feeds nicely in there. And it's just a easy peasy way to make a well like this. And there's the downslope again. You can see on the edges of the well that oxidation and trash kind of boiling. That's where the 309 is really helping me uh, on this job. Instead of having to get in there and, and fine clean everything. Uh, Otherwise, having porosity, it's helping out. So I'm, I tilted it up, and again, using the using that third hand to, for a additional ground, making the end welds here. I always prefer to have a foot pedal. In fact, I'm going to have to buy another one and, and make sure I have one at everywhere that I uh, that I have a machine, which is three different places actually. So I'm having to move this pedal around sometimes. On something this thick, though, just using a torch switch is usually not a problem. Okay, now you can notice the tip of that electrode. It's got some of that oxidation and whatnot jumping off and fuzzing it up a little bit. I never did dip it, but uh, that was a problem with the welding, TIG welding over MIG weld. So uh, just keep that in mind. And uh, thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.